Me dais la entrada, ¿no? Sí, 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 yo te la doy. Adelante, Pa. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, bienvenidos, welcome, bienvenue, marhaba bikum, to the Union for the Mediterranean and this five days conference on women for the Mediterranean. A warm welcome to you all. First, I would like to ask you to please participate and share your ideas, comments and suggestions to these interactive dialogues or different platforms. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram. Please use our hashtag Women for Mediterranean and download our app for an enhanced conference experience. Let's officially open the conference. I invite now participants to listen to the official opening remarks of the Secretary General for, of the Union for the Mediterranean, His Excellency, Nasser Kamel. Thank you very much for a nice introduction. Dear European Commissioner for Equality, dear ministers, Secretary of State, all the Secretary General of International Organization and Regional Organization present with us today, ladies and gentlemen, it is truly a great honor for me to welcome you today for our fifth UFM High Level Women Conference under the title Accelerating Gender Equality in the Context of COVID-19 Pandemic. The 2020 UFM High Level Women Conference coincides with the 25th anniversary of the Barcelona Process, which was launched 25 years ago to strengthen the relation between Europe and the southern and eastern Mediterranean countries, laying the foundations of the Union for the Mediterranean. <laughs> this year also marks another silver jubilee, that of the Beijing Declaration, which is considered the most pivotal global roadmap for the achievement of gender equality these two important dates serve as a milestone for the UFM member state to assess the progress made in advancing gender equality in our region. Not only to address the remaining challenges, but also to update strategies for the years to come. They also come at a time of great disruption for the region and the world with the pandemic spreading and pushing us into an unprecedented crisis. That's why the theme of this year, UFM High Level Conference, are therefore extremely relevant. Indeed, while laying the foundation for the coming years towards closing the gender gap in the Euro-Mediterranean region under the current context. The conference seeks to further analyze the impact of the pandemic on women and girls, and to highlight the key role played by women in addressing this pandemic. Dear participants, ladies and gentlemen, the COVID-19 has immersed us into a new year, bringing to the four alarming vulnerabilities and inequalities. The consequences and effects of this pandemic will be, unfortunately, extremely far-reaching and will surely unfold for years ahead, particularly in our region, where conditions of fragility are further concentrated. The impact of crisis are never gender neutral, unfortunately, and COVID-19 is no exception. Across the Mediterranean, the virus poses the highest risk to women and girls, especially those who are already living on the economic and social margin. Indeed, while the MENA female formal labor force participation rate is already very low worldwide, 20%, there are 20% uh, 
at regional level. And the employment is as high as 43% for female youth. According to the UN, women in the Arab world will lose more than 700,000 jobs as a result of this current pandemic. And that we will, and that we will see a loss of 40 billion US dollars in the region GDP. This discouraging picture of unevenly distributed repercussions is explained by the fact that some of the sectors hardest hit, hit by the pandemic are women-dominated sectors, characterized by low pay and poor working conditions. The accommodation and food service sector, for example, have been devastated by job loss. We all know how much these sectors are important for the Mediterranean region, and uh, women are overrepresented in that in those sectors. Domestic workers also are particularly at risk. Lockdowns and quarantine measures have made it difficult to maintain pre-pandemic working arrangements, resulting in a loss of income and employment among this largely female workforce. Even though women account today for 70% of the health and social care workforce, and they are on the front line in combating the pandemic, they remain largely segregated into lower status and lower paid jobs and are still underrepresented in leadership and decision-making processes. We know that 70% of executive directors of global health organizations are men, while women percentage is extremely low. Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, all these challenges are what we will be addressing, among others, in our UFM Women High Level Conference. This conference has become, I'm glad to say, one of the main regional tools to assess the progress made in advancing gender equality and women in power. For almost five years, has been a catalyst for policy advocacy, concrete initiative, and projects. New ideas, multi-stakeholders collaboration and partnership. And now in the face of the current disruptive events, the need for coordinated cooperation is more important than ever. So I'm proud to note that we are joined online by a huge number of distinguished speakers and participants, both from our member states and also a number of renowned international organizations, heads of international organizations. The rich participation reflects your strong commitment to accelerate gender equality in the region. The Union for the Mediterranean has always put gender equality and women empowerment at the heart, at the heart of its agenda. Our action was notably endorsed at our fourth ministerial conference on strengthening the role of women in society, which took place in Cairo in November 2017, and is monitored by a set of indicators as part of that ministerial follow-up that will allow us to gather relevant data, monitor progress, evaluate the gender gap, and provide recommendations to our policymakers and stakeholders in order to improve the impact of that declaration, which is the action plan in the region. With this mechanism, our member states recognize that when we look to the future and to rebuilding the economy, and we have to rebuild it better and more even and inclusive, including for our women and girls, it is absolutely critical to invest in women and create a gender equal business ecosystem. Putting women at the heart of our response to this pandemic means we see a leap in progress. And today, we are ready to take our action to new heights, hand in hand with you. We must not lose hope. We must instead rethink a future based on resilience, solidarity, and a stronger regional cooperation with a caring society that leaves no one behind. I wish you a very fruitful conference, positive outcome, and I thank you very, very, very much for your attention. The floor is yours.
I thank the Secretary General for his statement. I have the honor to invite now Her Excellency, Laia Bonet, Deputy Mayor for the 2030 Agenda, Digital Transition and International Relations, in representation of the Mayor of Barcelona, Mrs. Ada Colau. Your Excellency, you have the floor. Good afternoon. It's a really a pleasure to be here today at the opening of this conference, which aims to focus on the situation and potential of Mediterranean women in facing the many challenges our region is exposed to. We are going through difficult times. The pandemic has exposed a whole system that is incap incapable of eliminating structural inequalities and continues to reproduce them. A system that is exploiting the planet and acts as if the resources were infinite. A system that allows speculation with basic goods, such as housing, and fails to place the protection of rights ahead of particular interests. A system that does not recognize the importance of care work carried out mainly by women, and that is essential for maintaining the life in our communities. The transformation of this model is urgent and inevitable, and women have to be protagonists in this transition. The feminization of this process is the key to its success. success. What we have experienced in 2020 has revealed what we already knew, the greater vulnerability of women when the system is under stress, as is happening with the pandemic. It has highlighted the feminization of poverty, with an important harm for the labor and economic situation of women, especially the most precarious ones, women in informal economy or in an irregular administrative situation. Many of the essential tasks during lockdown are highly feminized. Care, nursing homes, healthcare, cleaning, supermarkets, and they have suffered a significant impact during this period in terms of overload fatigue, exposure to contagion, anguish, and so on. And it has also been seen uh, how women take care of children, the elderly, and dependent people in most cases. In a situation of progressive easing of lockdown in the medium term, the difficulties of conciliation can cause women to be forced to withdraw from the labor market on a massive scale. This scenario can have a very strong impact on the growth of poverty in families. In addition, certain groups of women find themselves in a special situation of, uh, of vulnerability. Migrant women, women with low qualifications, women suffering situation, situations of gender-based violence, domestic workers, heads of single mother families, sex workers, and victims of human being trafficking, uh, trafficking, among others. This greater vulnerability of women in the context of COVID will reoccur in the face of any other crisis if we do not achieve a much deeper transformation now. This is why it is important to understand this moment as an opportunity to try to trigger broader transformation beyond recovery. It is a challenge that we also place in a very complex context, the Mediterranean, a geographical area that suffers from great structural inequalities. It is one of the most unequal north-south borders in the world. With a particularly intense impact of climate change, it is calculated 20% higher than in the rest of the planet and which combines geopolitical tensions that permanently destabilize uh, the region. In 1995, uh, 25 years ago, the Barcelona process began with the aim of creating a space of peace, shared prosperity, and dialogue in the region. Today, the situation is not the same. The conflict has increased with our sea being the scene of conflicts that destabilized uh, the region and caused large movements of displaced people. Death has stained the waters of the Mediterranean for years, and we cannot allow this to continue to happen. We must be able to establish safe routes uh, once and for all, and protect the lives of human rights of migrants. 
uh, the lives and human rights, sorry. Several crises coexist in the Mediterranean and beyond the control of the virus. It is also urgent to tackle human mobility in a radically different way if we want to look to the future with optimism. Let us use this framework of multi-level relationships that is the Union for the Mediterranean um, to analyze the situation and find shared solutions for the Mediterranean. The cities of the northern and the southern shores have years of cooperation and exchanges. Many cities in southern Europe have offered ourselves as safe ports. Cities and the local world can be good allies to find solutions and join in with the cooperation and multilateral work. We have a shared roadmap, the 2030 Agenda, and the strength of municipalism. From Barcelona, we will continue working tirelessly to recover and renew the spirit of the Barcelona process. Share commitments of peace and stability, economic progress, and dialogue between peoples. Finally, I would like to insist once again that the response to this crisis must be done from feminism, from the defense of collective interests and a balanced relationship with natural resources. The solution must necessarily include putting life and care at the center. I am convinced that the sessions of this conference of Women for the Mediterranean that we inaugurate today will add to this collective push towards a truly transformative way out of the crisis. Thank you very much. I thank Mrs. Laia Bonnet for her statement. Thank you. And now we shall hear the pre-recorded opening remarks of the Union for the Mediterranean co-presidency. Her Excellency Dr. Elena Dali, EU Commissioner for Equality, and His Excellency Aymamoum Fliahoum, Minister of Social Development, Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. Exactly 25 years after the creation of the Union for the Mediterranean and the Beijing Platform for Action to Achieve Gender Equality, we are faced with a global pandemic, a pandemic that is shaking our societies and economies to the core while exacerbating existing gender equalities. The consequences of the pandemic are hitting women disproportionately. Reports of domestic violence have surged during lockdown period. Women form the majority of health and social workers at the front line of the response and are overrepresented in many professions in close contact with the public. These are often low paid and precarious jobs. With school closures, women have also been shouldering most of the care work at home. This has reinforced long standing stereotypical gender roles and inequalities. Gender-sensitive responses to the crisis are thus crucial if we are to emerge from this testing period stronger. I do believe we can turn the current situation into an opportunity for change and regeneration. The European Commission acted quickly to provide member states with the necessary flexibility of the EU budget instruments to support their healthcare systems, businesses and workers, including women workers. The new Commission's Next Generation EU Recovery Instrument and the revamped multi-annual financial framework highlights the need to address inequalities through recovery programs. In March, I presented an EU gender equality strategy, which is the strategic framework for our actions until 2025. The strategy needs to be one of the motors of the EU's recovery from the crisis. It includes measures to prevent, prevent and combat gender-based violence, support and protect victims of such crimes, and hold perpetrators accountable. It also addresses gender inequality on the labour market, including the gender pay gap. The Commission will soon come forward with a proposal for binding measures on pay transparency to ensure that women and men are paid equally for the same work performed. 
The Commission will also further work-life balance for women and men by ensuring that Member States implement last year's adopted directive. Soon we will also present the third Gender Action Plan for the EU's external relations. The EU's work on gender equality is well reflected in the strategy of the Union for the Mediterranean on the empowerment of women and youth. Women's empowerment and promotion of their economic, social and political rights and addressing the root causes of the current challenges facing the region. So let's work together for a gender equal EU and Euro-Mediterranean region in a gender equal world. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أصحاب المعالي والسعادة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحضور الكرام اسمحوا لي بداية أن أتقدم بالشكر للاتحاد من أجل المتوسط على إتاحة الفرصة لي ممثلا لبلد الأردن للرئاسة المشتركة للاتحاد من أجل المتوسط للمشاركة في هذا المؤتمر رفيع المستوى لا شك أن انتشار فيروس كورونا عالميا له تداعياته الاجتماعية والإنسانية على المجتمع بشكل عام وعلى الشرائح المهمشة والضعيفة حيث أن انتشار هذا الوباء كان له آثار مضاعفة على النساء بشكل خاص إضافة إلى الأوضاع الاقتصادية والاجتماعية الصعبة فعلى مستوى الرعاية الصحية فإن النساء يقفنا على الخطوط الأمامية لمواجهة جائحة كورونا فغالبية العاملين في القطاع الصحي هن من الطبيبات والممرضات والقابلات وموظفات الدعم كما أن النساء أيضا يشكلن النسبة الأكبر للعاملين في خدمات الاجتماعية مما يزيد من خطر إصابتهن بالفيروس في غالبية الدول تتولى النساء والفتيات توفير الخدمات الرعاية المنزلية لأفراد الأسرة مثل الأطفال وكبار السن والمرضى وأشخاص ذو الإعاقة مما يؤدي إلى تفاقم عبء هذا العمل عليهن والتأثير على مناعتهن ضد الأمراض وزيادة احتمالية إصابتهن بالفيروس أما على مستوى الأوضاع الاقتصادية من المتوقع أن تزيد معدلات الفقر في المنطقة مما يؤثر على الأسر التي تعيلها النساء بسبب انقطاع الموارد المالية نتيجة تخفيض نسبة العمالة أو توقف الأعمال وزيادة الأعباء المالية الغير المتوقعة مثل التكلفة وسائل الحماية الشخصية الصحية والتعقيم كذلك من المتوقع أن يؤدي انتشار جائحة كورونا إلى خسائر ملايين الوظائف التي تشغلها النساء في ظل معدلات البطالة العالية بين النساء من جهة ومن جهة أخرى فإن النساء يعملن بأشور زهيدة في الوظائف الغير مستقرة في قطاع غير منظم في ظل غياب شبكة الأمان الاجتماعي لحمايتهن وعلى مستوى الوصول إلى التكنولوجيا المعلومات والعمل عن البعد فإن زيادة انتشار فيروس كورونا أدى إلى أولا اتخاذ إجراءات جديدة لضمان استمرارية التعليم والعمل عن بعد حيث لا تتوفر الإمكانيات لدى الأسر التي تعاني من أوضاع معيشة مما يؤدي إلى صعوبة استمرارية العملية التعليمية للأفراد الأسرة من جهة وصعوبة استمرار أرباب الأسر في العمل عن بعد من جهة أخرى إضافة إلى المعايير التمييزية التي تتبعها بعض الأسر حيث تعطى للذكور أولوية في اقتناء الحاسوب والإنترنت وهذا ما سيعيق بعض النساء والفتيات من الوصول إلى الخدمات التعليمية والعمل عن بعد أما في مجال العنف القائم على النوع الاجتماعي لجائحة كورونا تأثير كبير على مختلف أشكال العنف ضد المرأة والعنف القائم على النوع الاجتماعي حيث زادت معدلات العنف الأسري أثناء جائحة كورونا نتيجة الإجراءات الإغلاق الشامل ومنع التنقل والتعايش القصري لأفراد الأسرة والتفاقم الضغوط الاقتصادية والصحية التي فرضتها الجائحة إضافة إلى عدم قدرة الناجيات من العنف الوصول إلى الحماية والوقاية من العنف نتيجة للقيود المفروضة على التنقل وعلى مستوى بلد الأردن اسمحوا لي أن أذكر بعض الإجراءات التي قامت بها الحكومة الأردنية أثناء جائحة كورونا حيث قامت الحكومة بما يلي تشكيل فريق الحماية الاجتماعية ترأسه وزارة التنمية الاجتماعية 
مهمته التنسيق المساعدات العينية والنقدية لكل الجلسين وتوسيع شريحة المستفيدين من خدمات الحماية حيث كانت نسبة النساء المستفيدات من خدمات صندوق العون الاجتماعي أكثر من 61% ثانيا اطلاق الخدمات والمنصات الالكترونيه لتتم من خلالها تقديم الخدمات المختلفه خلال الجائحه استحداث مجموعه من صناديق العون الوطني لدعم الفئات التي تاثرت بداعيات الجائحه وخاصه النساء ثالثا اتخاذ اجراءات وقائيه في دور ومؤسسات الرعايه والحمايه الايوائيه لادامه الخدمات فيها والحد من انتشار الفيروس بين المنتفعين اسمحوا لي أن أضع بعض التوصيات التي قد تساهم في دعم النساء أثناء أزمة جائحة كورونا أولاً إسناد أدوار قيادية للنساء في الاستجابة لجائحة كورونا بشكل يضمن مشاركتهن في التخطيط للإدارة الأزمة في كافة المراحل الاستجابة لها والتعافي منها ثانياً التعاون مع الجهات الدولية في مجال تعزيز أنظمة الحماية الاجتماعية والنهوض بها وضمان استفادة النساء من مختلف الفئات العمرية من هذه الأنظمة وبعدالة ثالثاً ضمان وصول النساء إلى خدمات الإلكترونية وتدريبهن عليها مما في ذلك التعلم والتعليم عن بعد متمنياً لهذا المؤتمر الخروج بتوصيات عملية تساعد في تجاوز الأزمة وتأثيرها على النساء والفتيات والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I have now the honor to introduce the opening remarks by the conveners of the official opening. In the following messages, the distinguished speakers will present a general view of the situation, focusing on the backlash of women's rights due to the pandemic and calling for action. They highlight women's presence during the fight against the pandemic and call for visibility of women as agents of change with an emphasis on collaboration and cooperation. I invite you to hear now Her Excellency, Maria Luis Coleiro Preca, President Emeritus of the Republic of Malta. Her Excellency, Noelia Vera Ruiz Herrera, Secretary of the State for Equality and Gender Violence, Kingdom of Spain. Her Excellency, Elena Bonetti, Minister for Gender, Equality and Family, Italian Republic. Her Excellency, Emily Yolitis, Minister of Justice and Public Order, Republic of Cyprus. Women's resilience, abilities and strengths have often been appreciated in times of crisis. Unfortunately, most cultures and societies, historically and traditionally, have always depicted women as the first sex, identifying their vulnerabilities as the weaknesses that distinguish them from men. The COVID-19 pandemic has once again given visibility to the resilience, endurance, and abilities of women. But why should societies appreciate women more in times of emergency? Why aren't we capable as a global human family to realize once and for all that women are the necessary half of what constitutes and what ensures progress and well-being for all? How can we mistake the invaluable love that a mother gives to her children? An act, why is it considered as an act of weakness? Our world and our societies are in their need of respect, love, and dignity. How can we continue to ignore that women constitute half of the world's population and that humanity cannot afford the absence of women in leadership? I urge our male leaders to come to terms with the need for women to be at the front, alongside men, to be an integral part of the think tanks for the much-needed recovery plans. COVID-19 is showing us the beauty of the strength of women as frontliners, as being the brave people of the world that are not afraid to face the dangers and the risks of the multitude situations that are arising from one minute to the other. According to UN Women, 
women make up almost 70% of the healthcare workforce. Women have shown and are showing not only resilience and bravery, but also impeccable intelligence in the rapid search for solutions to this horrendous virus that is threatening humanity. On the other hand, we must also acknowledge that the COVID-19 pandemic has had a profound negative impact on women across the world in more ways than one. Women still carry the weight of taking care of the sick and the vulnerable. And with the closure of schools, their unpaid workload at home increased drastically. Mothers have had to shoulder immeasurable burdens during lockdowns. Mothers had to become the teachers of their own children. Mothers have had no choice other than giving up their financial independence to take care of their children, and in particular, of their children with disabilities or children with learning difficulties. Research is showing that women have been and are still being impacted much harder. Women and children are struggling with new swaths of poverty and material deprivation. Women who were pre-pandemic lived in disadvantaged situations are even more negatively affected. Economic insecurity has increased significantly. Social isolation has also increased the risk of domestic abuse and violence. Women are trapped in confinement with their perpetrators. On the other hand, I must acknowledge the few female political leaders who have been handling the COVID-19 crisis admirably. Their leadership qualities, coupled with empathy and compassion, has made their countries and people stand out. This is also a time for reflection. This is the time to ensure that policy measures and our world's recovery plans embrace a gender lens, bringing in the unique perspectives and aspirations of all women. The international community and national governments must live up to their commitment to effectively implement the United Nations Agenda 2030. I will end my contribution by quoting Nelson Mandela when he said, social equality is the only basis of human happiness. We owe social equality to each and every one of us. We owe it especially to our girls and boys. Es un placer para mí, como Secretaria de Estado de Igualdad y contra la Violencia de Género, tomar parte en esta conferencia de Mujeres por el Mediterráneo, que durante los próximos días sé que abordará los importantes desafíos que el coronavirus supone para los derechos de las mujeres y para el conjunto del mundo en, en general. Está claro que, que la pandemia del coronavirus es un reto global que tenemos que afrontar con el mismo espíritu con el que se celebra este evento, es decir, juntas, en permanente diálogo y escucha, buscando de qué forma nuestra cooperación y nuestra acción coordinada pueden afrontar el reto a la igualdad que supone la COVID-19. La pandemia nos ha mostrado desde luego lo que es esencial, aquello que resulta imprescindible para que la vida se sostenga en momentos de extrema dureza para todo el mundo. La sanidad, en la que la presencia de las mujeres es abrumadora, el cuidado en todas sus formas, desde la infancia a las personas mayores o dependientes, las cadenas de suministro de, del alimento o los derechos básicos a una vivienda o el acceso a la salud. ¿no? Eh, debemos aprender de esta experiencia traumática para repensar nuestras relaciones socioeconómicas, para dar un impulso definitivo a la igualdad de género y debemos reforzar nuestros compromisos en materia de derechos, apuntalando las conquistas e impidiendo los retrocesos que, por desgracia, son una amenaza y un riesgo eh, muy real. ¿no? Eh, desde la Secretaría de Estado de Igualdad y contra la violencia de género del Ministerio de Igualdad y del Gobierno de España somos muy conscientes de los enormes desafíos que nos plantea el coronavirus. El primero es que si los gobiernos no desarrollamos estrategias y políticas públicas para contener su impacto socioeconómico, la situación de las mujeres y de las niñas en concreto corre serio riesgo de retroceder en todos los ámbitos, desde el empleo hasta la educación, pasando por el impacto mayor que ha tenido la violencia machista desde comienzos de, del año y que nos ha dejado números muy alarmantes. ¿no? Es fundamental también que la sociedad civil, el movimiento feminista y las organizaciones que impulsan el cambio y la transformación aporten su visión y su liderazgo en este proceso de, de resistir el impacto del coronavirus y avanzar en igualdad. Ahora ya hace 25 años que se adoptó la Declaración y Plataforma de Acción de Beijing, que sigue siendo 
un faro para conseguir una sociedad justa y tenemos por delante un importante decenio para, para lograr que los objetivos de desarrollo sostenible de la Agenda 2030 de Naciones Unidas sean una realidad. España, en concreto, ratifica su compromiso con esos grandes acuerdos y procesos internacionales que tienen en su centro la defensa de los derechos humanos. Y si antes de la crisis, además, eh, eran herramientas fundamentales en la política mundial, hoy por hoy sabemos que son imprescindibles para construir una realidad post-Covid que sea justa, que sea sostenible, que no tolere la violencia y que garantice la igualdad de género en absolutamente todos los ámbitos de la vida. Por tanto, no, no me dilato más, os deseo un muy fructífero encuentro y discusión y reitero mi compromiso y el del Gobierno de España con la igualdad de todas las mujeres y con conferencias que como esta nos acercan y nos permiten reflexionar desde todo aquello que compartimos y también como pueblos bañados por, por el mismo mar que deben urdir estrategias colectivas para lograr la igualdad de forma conjunta. Muchas gracias y buena suerte. Dear authorities and guests, let me say that I was pleased to receive the invitation to this conference and I'm truly honored to send this message. The COVID-19 outbreak has affected all nations and populations at a global level with no distinction and the Mediterranean area was no exception. This experience has shown the fragilities of our social system. It has undermined our certainties and traditional way of living. However, the impact was not the same on everyone. The consequences of the epidemic on the economic and social level have worsened the inequalities between men and women. Also in countries like Italy, where the work towards the full equality is consistent, or full progress is still needed. Women have already paid the highest price of this epidemic, despite once again they demonstrated resilience in the reconciliation of work and family life and also a greater biological resistance. In this month, the most crucial working sectors, starting from the healthcare, are the ones where women are the majority of workers. When we talk about heroes, we are mostly talking about heroines. During the lockdown, the Italian government immediately adopted additional tools to support work-life balance, starting from ad hoc parental leaves and access to smart working for parents, so to reduce the negative impact on female work. The budget for female entrepreneurship, heavily hit by the lockdown, was increased by 5 million euros. But while we were facing the emergency, we knew we were also in need of new tools to address the new challenges and to take the opportunity to transform this time of crisis into a positive time, a kairos. Our model of society has proven to be fragile in the face of a systemic crisis. Consequently, the new social model we wanted and we still want should put together the pieces of humanity in an integrated and global vision. Productive, economic, social, ecological issues are interrelated parts of a complex and multidimensional context of living in the community. Likewise, humanity needs to be reconsidered in its harmonized dimension. The person, not the individual, is the winner of this experience. COVID-19 urged us to recognize that the person must be considered in his or her lifetime, in his or her fundamental relationships, as a part of a community where he or she is a value and a protagonist who is able to contribute to the common good. We knew we were in need of a strategy. Then I decided to call to action some women that would help us to prepare a new renaissance. I set up a female team Women for a New Renaissance at the Department for Equal Opportunities convinced that, that by starting from women and with women, we can build a new path of growth for the country. We have worked on five areas of intervention, gender equality, labor, science, solidarity, communication. Here are some key words emerging from this time of crisis from women for all. Connecting 
because uh, we are called to fight the dehumanizing abstraction with the concreteness of creating links and correlations that are able to activate historical, economic and social dynamism, connecting places, experiences, skills, areas of life, promoting, not just protecting, because only by recognizing the value of everyone we will be able to release the centrality and the responsibility of each person. We need to boost up the only chance we have to start again and to give a perspective of future to our personal and collective choices. Caring, because this is the time of mutual care, which requires listening, observing, understanding. To do good to oneself and to others with the empathy that this time has asked us to nurture. Educating, because of this epochal change establishes the importance of generating again in front of the new. We need paradigms that are open to the new in order to give life to new things, a language of true beyond stereotypes, and a knowledge which is able to integrate the scientific method and the variety of, of humanistic heritage. From all of this now, we, across both sides of the Mediterranean area, are called to start again with a risk and an opportunity. The risk is to go back to an obsolete narrative that disembodied vision, which portrays reality only in a masculine sense, although it is actually animated by women. On the contrary, the opportunity is making the restart the moment of a true co-responsibility between women and men in front of the future that awaits us as a national community, a chosen, designed and implemented co-responsibility. We cannot do without the contribution of women to refill, build and project themselves into the future. The opportunity is a favorable time to be seized now. Your Excellency Ambassador, Secretary General of the Union for the Mediterranean, Excellencies, distinguished guests. It is a great honour and privilege to address the fifth high level Union of Women for the Mediterranean Conference on accelerating gender equality in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. This year, we mark the 25th anniversary of the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action, one of the most comprehensive international tr tools for the advancement of women's rights. However, in the year 2020, not only have we not reached global equality, but we have witnessed a backlash on women's rights, and it's without a doubt that COVID-19 helped to push back women's rights even more. Indeed, the COVID-19 pandemic has admittedly exposed and multiplied gender inequality. In fact, according to the UN Secretary General, the pandemic has deepened pre-existing discrimination and inequalities exposed vulnerabilities in social, political and economic systems, which have in turn amplified the impact of the pandemic. Across the globe, women earn less, save less, hold less secure jobs, and evidence shows that they are more likely to be employed in the informal sector. As a result, they have less access to social protection, while at the same time, they are the majority of single parent households. Their capacity to absorb economic shock is therefore less than that of men. Home is not a safe space for everyone. Quarantines, school closures, and other movement restrictions to curb the spread of COVID have contributed to the sharp increase in the rates of violence against women, in particular domestic and intimate partner violence, due to the combination of various factors, including increased levels of tension and unavoidable closer coexistence, economic stress, and the disruption of social and protective networks. Health systems around the world have been tested reallocation of resources, shortages of medical supplies, and disruptions of global supply chains have undermined the sexual and reproductive health and rights of women and girls, including their access to maternal care, contraception, and treatments for HIV and AIDS and other sexually transmitted infections. Despite the obstacles, the difficulties, and limitations, women are still at the front line of responding to the COVID-19 pandemic. According to the European Institute for Gender Equality, Globally, women comprise 70% of health workers, including midwives, nurses, pharmacists, and community health workers. Women are also playing a key role in essential services, such as in the food production and supply chain, cleaning and laundry and care work, 
and yet many of them are working in low-wage, unpaid care and precarious conditions such as domestic work. In many countries, women are concentrated in irregular employment and in the informal sector who are highly prone to disruption and with no or limited access to social protection. In the formal economy, women are also overrepresented in hospitality such as hotels and restaurants, manufacturing, retail and leisure and recreation industries that have been among the hardest hit by the response to COVID-19. Despite the critical needs for voices, expertise and experience of women and girls in their responses to and recovery from the pandemic, women and girls and women's networks and rights organizations are not equally represented in global policy spaces. Feminist movements and women human rights defenders are constantly under threat. In Cyprus, systematic efforts have been made during the last years towards increasing the budget and funding allocated to women's organizations and civil society organizations. These funds are put towards stimulating and implementing actions that aim to promote equality between women and men and to eliminate social stereotypes and prejudice. It is noteworthy that in recent months funding has been provided to many NGOs, women's organizations and to other bodies and agents who promote gender equality through implementing actions and programs that aim to mitigate the consequences of COVID-19 with a particular emphasis on women. In this context, the Commissioner for Gender Equality, with the full support of the Ministry of Justice and Public Order, has prepared a television spot highlighting women's presence during the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. Aiming to underline the visibility of women as agents of change, the spot includes women of diverse professional backgrounds, from doctors and nurses and the wider care services to security forces who played a critical role in the fight against the pandemic, showing at least in this way appreciation and recognition of women's participation in times of crisis. Ladies and gentlemen, Despite any difficulties, responses to the pandemic have also created opportunities to transform the society in positive ways. The pandemic has shone a spotlight on the real value of care workers and care work. It has demonstrated the real risk of overlooking gender inequality and discriminatory gender norms. It demanded change of our lifestyles, including more flexible ways of work and rethinking of distribution of work at home. The responses to it highlighted the value of women's leadership and acute need for solidarity and cooperation. The advancement of women's rights is a priority for the government of Cyprus, and we are determined to continue and intensify efforts towards a full and substantial realization of equality between women and men. Thank you. consequences that the COVID-19 pandemic has had for women and men. They also introduced and mentioned some national good practices that have been implemented in their countries to further women's empowerment and gender mainstreaming, as well as fighting against gender-based violence, gender gap, or unequal distribution of care work for the unequal representation in decision-making bodies. They all show commitment to regional cooperation and highlight the importance of building back better together. I kindly invite you to listen. Her Excellency Asha Lindagen, Minister of Gender Equality, Kingdom of Sweden. Her Excellency Kautar Kriku, Minister of National Solidarity of Family and the Status of Women, People's Republic of Algeria. Your Excellency, Maria Vieira da Silva, Minister of State for the Presidency, Republic of Portugal. Her Excellency, Jamila Atmusali, Minister of Solidarity, Social Development, Equality and the Family, Kingdom of Morocco. Her Excellency, Rosian Kutahar, Parliamentary Secretary for Equality and Reforms, Republic of Malta. Her Excellency, Bungil Bergistan, a State Secretary in the Ministry of Culture, Kingdom of Norway. Her Excellency, Maya Morsi, President, National Council for Women, Arab Republic of Egypt.
excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the kind invitation to speak on this very important occasion, the fifth high level UFM Women for Mediterranean Conference. My name is Osa Lindhagen and I am the Swedish Minister for Gender Equality with responsibility for anti-discrimination and anti-segregation. I am proud to represent the world's first feminist government and the goal for the Swedish gender equality policy is that women and men shall have the same power to shape society and their own lives. A feminist government is committed to achieve this through a policy agenda that combats inequality and inhibitive gender roles and structures. Gender equality must be central to all decision making and resource allocation. The spring of 2020 was supposed to be a celebration for gender equality, a year to salute uh, the 25th uh, anniversary of the Beijing Platform for Action, the 20th anniversary for Security Council Resolution 1325 and the 5th anniversary of Agenda 2030. Instead, on a global level, the COVID-19 pandemic has exposed inequalities and increased the gap between women and men. For example, men's violence against women and girls has been increasing, which is one of the ultimate expressions of inequality between women and men. Everyone must be able to fully enjoy all human rights, irrespective of sex, gender identity or expression, ethnicity, religion or other belief, uh, disability, sexual orientation or age. Another top priority for my government is that women and men shall have the same opportunities and conditions as regards paid work, which gives economic independence throughout life. There is also an obvious link between men's violence against women and economic aspects. For example, the importance of financial independence so that women are able to leave a violent relationship. During the pandemic, it has become even more clear that many women have a weaker position on the labor market due to precarious work and therefore are economically more dependent on the partner. A strong welfare state that includes gender transformative reforms is a must to tackle this challenge when we build back better during and after COVID-19. At the same time as we are fighting the pandemic, climate change continues to exacerbate tensions and conflicts. Human rights and democracy continue to be challenged in various parts of the world. Sexual and reproductive health and rights are under attack. Altogether, these are obstacles to building a gender equal and sustainable society. As we all know, gender equality is a prerequisite for democracy and this is why Sweden pursues a feminist foreign policy together with another major policy initiative, the drive for democracy. Sweden is and will continue to be a committed partner in the struggle to achieve gender equality. Let us continue this game-changing work together. Thank you. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السيدات والسادة أصحاب المعالي السيدات والسادة الحضور يسرني أن أشارك في هذا اللقاء رفيع المستوى شاكرة منظميه على تخصيص فضاء لتبادل الخبرات حول مجهودات الدول لتسريع المساواة بين الجنسين في ظل جائحة كورونا كوفيد 19 وهذا بما يتطابق مع أهداف التنمية المستدامة لا سيما الهدف الخامس منها لقد التف الجميع في بلادنا في إطار التضامن الفطري للشعب الجزائري حول مجهودات الدولة لمكافحة جائحة كورونا نساء ورجالا على حد سواء باعتبار أن المرأة الجزائرية تشكل نصف المجتمع كطاقة إنتاجية يعول عليها في بناء الصرح المؤسسات للدولة وهو ما جسده الدستور الجزائري مؤخرا الذي زكاها الشعب في الفاتح من نوفمبر 2020 بتكريس مبدأ التناصف بين الرجال والنساء في سوق التشغيل 
وترقية المرأة في مناصب المسؤولية بتوسيع حظوظ تمثيلها النيابي في المجالس المنتخبة لتسجل المرأة الجزائرية بصمتها الواعية والتضامنية لمجابهة الأزمة سواء على مستوى الطواقم الطبية أو المجتمع المدني أو الإبداع المنزلي الذي تحول إلى مساهمة فعالة في توفير مستلزمات التعقيم والمحافظة على الصحة العامة من خلال حملات خياطة الكمامات لنساء ماكثات في البيت أو مستفيدات من مختلف برامج دعم التشغيل التي توفرها الدولة لا سيما الوكالة الوطنية للقرض المصغر بنسبة 64% للمرأة تشكل هذه المرأة المثابرة عضوا فعالا في خلايا الإصغاء على مستوى قطاعي الصحة والتضامن الوطني للإصغاء لانشغالات المواطنين والمواطنين والمواطنات واستفساراتهم حول كيفية التعامل مع الأزمة خاصة في علاقة المرأة بأسرتها أثناء فترة الحجر الصحي ومعالجة الضغوطات النفسية لهذا الغرض يشرف عليها طبيبات وأخصائيات نفسانيات بعنوان استشارات أسرية لأرضية رقمية وكذا الجيش الأبيض يستشير وهي أرضيات رقمية لمساندة الطواقم الطبية والأسر إلى جانب حملات التحسيس والتوعية للتكفل بالفتيات والنساء القاطنات بالمناطق النائية وهذا جنبا إلى جنب مع الرجل مما شجع الوكالة الوطنية لتسيير القرض المصغر التابعة لقطاع التضامن الوطني والأسرة وقضايا المرأة على تدعيم مشاريع العديد من النساء الريفيات تندرج في إطار الوقاية من فيروس كورونا ولا الندوة الدولية للمرأة الريفية تحت شعار إبداع المرأة الريفية بمعايير دولية والتي انعقدت بالتنسيق مع برنامج الأمم المتحدة الإنمائي في 15 أكتوبر 2020 لخير مثال على إصرار الدولة على ترقية قدرات المرأة الريفية وجعلها تكتسح الأسواق الدولية بقناعة راسخة وثقة كاملة في إبداعها إلى جانب الرجل وهذا لبناء الصرح المؤسسات للدولة على قدم المساواة وإن كان ذلك عبر منصات اللقاءات الافتراضية نظرا للظرف الصحي وتحويل جل النشاطات والتظاهرات إلى منابر لتبادل الخبرات كما هو حال لقاء اليوم نؤكد في الأخير على قناعة الإرادة السياسية بقدرات المرأة الجزائرية وهمتها في بناء الصرح المؤسسات للدولة إلى جانب أخيها الرجل وبنفس الإرادة الواعية مما دفع إلى تكريس ذلك في مضامين الدستور الجديد المصادق عليه يوم الفاتح نوفمبر على أساس مبادئ المساواة وعدم التمييز وحفظ حقوقها وحمايتها من كل أشكال العنف والعمل على ضمان سبل تمكينها السياسي والاقتصادي والتكنولوجي الذي دفعها إلى استخدام تكنولوجيا الإعلام والاتصال في ظل الأزمة الصحية من أجل الترويج لمنتجاتها ومساهماتها النظرية أو العملية من أجل دفع عجلة الاقتصاد الوطني تلك بإيجاز أهم النقاط التي ودت مشاطرتكم إياها كمنبر لتبادل خبرة أثبتت نجاعتها في سبيل إبراز مكان المرأة الجزائرية في وطنها أشكركم على كرم الإصغاء والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Dear colleagues and speakers, I am honored to join you, especially considering that we are celebrating 25 years of two relevant dialogues of our society. On one hand, the Barcelona process. This stepping stone has laid the foundations of a Mediterranean partnership embedded 
in the values of mutual understanding, cultural and social exchange. On the other hand, the Beijing Platform for Action, an important framework to help us achieve gender equality, protect women's rights and regard equality between men and women in all policy areas. Recently, we have been seeing backslides in the path towards gender equality, making it even more fundamental to stand for those that contribute to change. We must tackle the challenges that persist and that are now heavily exposed by the COVID-19 pandemic. Intolerable levels of violence against women still plague our societies. Confinement posed a significant risk, making countries adopt special measures to protect women. Thus, in Portugal, we have made available new support channels, opened new shelter facilities and increased our response capacity. During our presidency of the Council of the European Union, we will mark the 10 years of the Istanbul Convention on preventing and combat combating violence against women and domestic violence with a high-level conference. Moreover, heavy social and economic consequences are following. Besides comprising most of the front line against the pandemic, women are paid less and take up several hours of unpaid work. In Portugal, we have launched research calls to study these effects. And during the Portuguese presidency of the European Union, we will reflect upon the impact of COVID-19 on gender equality, focusing on working conditions, the labor market and the work-life balance. This is a challenging task that will not be solved in one meeting. It is an ongoing process. I call on us to keep working every day to fight discrimination, protect women's rights and ensure the pandemic will not delay our efforts. Thank you. لا شك أن المرأة المغربية اليوم تعرف الكثير من التطور وتعرف الكثير من المكتسبات سواء في التمكين السياسي والتمكين الاقتصادي والاجتماعي والثقافي والبيئي وهذا بفضل الإرادة الملكية السامية التي جعلت من قضية المرأة قضية ذات أولوية وذات راهنية وهذا ما تم ترجمته على المستوى الدستوري على المستوى كذلك القوانين سواء من القوانين التنظيمية أو القوانين بشكل عام التي ضمنت حضورا مميزا للمرأة المغربية في مجتمعنا ومن أهم البرامج كذلك اليوم لدينا خطة حكومية للمساواة التي تفرض وتؤثر للالتقائية بين مختلف الفاعلين في مجال المساواة بين الجنسين وأطلقنا في اليوم الوطني للمرأة المغربية وفي هذه يعني الأشهر الأخيرة برنامجا مهما وهو برنامج مغرب التمكين الذي يروم التحقيق مزيد من المشاركة الاقتصادية للمرأة رهاننا ومراهنتنا على التمكين الاقتصادي وعلى التنزيل الترابي لكل هذه البرامج باعتباره وباعتبار التمكين الاقتصادي مدخلا حقيقيا واساسيا لتجاوز مجموعه من الصعوبات والتحديات التي تعيشها النساء والفتيات خاصه من هن في وضعيه صعبه. اصدرنا كذلك نشره للمساواه ونعتبر هذه النشره اليه للرصد والتتبع لمختلف المنجزات الحكوميه والمنجزات المؤسساتيه في بلادنا من اجل تتبع مؤشرات التمكين للنساء والمساواه بين الجنسين. طبعا التحديات الموجودة تحديات القائمة تحتاج إلى مزيد من التعبئة حولها بين مختلف المتدخلين إلى مزيد والإرادة الحمد لله نتوفر على الإرادة السياسية بلادنا تتوفر على إرادة سياسية قوية لمزيد من تمكين النساء ونحتاج إلى يعني هذه التنزيل طبعا التنزيل الترابي والتنزيل المجالي هو الضامن لأن تكون هناك آثار لكل برامجنا على للمواطنات والمواطنين وختاما هي مناسبة لتحية كل نساء العالم وتحية نساء المغرب وتحية نساء المتوسط ومتمنياتي للجميع بالتوفيق والنجاح وشكرا Ladies and gentlemen, honored and distinguished guests Gender equality is a fundamental human right and the core principle of our society. It is a reflection of our society and our hopes for a more egalitarian future. 
It is also an essential condition for social justice, a thriving economy and a representative democracy. As government, we are committed to address inequality both in legislation and policy. As a result, female empowerment has come a long way and today our society is conscious of the importance of gender equality and how central it is for society as a whole. The COVID-19 pandemic has resulted in countless changes to our daily lives. We are all adjusting to new ways of living. Each person's situation is different, but for sure, the virus is further highlighting the different realities faced by women and men, not simply when it comes to the direct impact on health, but also on their diverging social and economic prospects. Recognizing the extent to which disease outbreaks affects women and men differently is a fundamental step towards understanding the primary and secondary effects of a public health emergency on different individuals, genders and communities, and thus creating effective, equitable policies and interventions. The Maltese government has introduced a number of initiatives to ensure to address the protection and promotion of gender equality, especially in relation to vulnerable groups. Victims of domestic violence are more likely to be in greater danger, as many people, including aggressors, are forced to stay at home. This means that victims are now more exposed to possible instances of violence and have less opportunities than usual to seek support. In view of this, we have increased our raising awareness campaigns and also introduced a form of silent reporting through the 112 app. This government has also extended the private rent housing benefit scheme to victims of domestic violence, which enables them to leave their homes as opposed to remaining confined with their perpetrators. Introduction of social measures, including additional leave for two months, to be paid at the rate of 800 euros per month to families, where both parents, guardians, are not able to make use of teleworking. COVID-19 has presented a new opportunity for both women and men to make use of teleworking when possible. Government has introduced a call to support employers and self-employed to invest in technology that enables teleworking and to partially cover the cost of teleworking solutions. The coronavirus pandemic presents us with a unique opportunity to affect systematic changes that could protect and support women for similar future eventualities. We need to continue providing accurate and supportive care and messaging with the intention to enhance people's safety, dignity and rights. Ensuring policies and interventions speak to everyone's needs, which is a fundamental step to understanding the primary and secondary effects of a health emergency on different individuals and communities. We need to recognize that the home may not be a safe place for some women and may indeed increase exposure to intimate partner violence. We need to ensure support and availabilities of helplines, shelters and access to justice and police protection for women exposed to gender-based violence. Flexible work arrangements currently in place in response to the pandemic should continue beyond it and provide a new model of shared responsibilities within households. We need to ensure that we are protecting vulnerable people with particular reference to older women, migrant women, LGBTIQ women, women living in poverty and other specific groups of women in situations of vulnerability. We also need to ensure that gender mainstreaming is applied in all areas of the recovery strategy. As Junior Minister for Equality, I declare a strong commitment to continue working to further safeguard equality in the various sectors in order to strengthen the considerable progress registered to date and address new and outstanding challenges for the achievement of de facto equality. I wish you a successful and fruitful meeting and I would like to take this opportunity to thank you all for all the hard work being done in breaking through the infamous glass ceiling. We are in the midst of a global crisis that, that demands action from national governments all over the world. It is important that the measures we take reach everyone in need of them. We must leave no one behind. Several of the measures taken to combat the COVID-19 virus have a particularly large impact on women. The pandemic might be especially challenging for people who suffer from physical or psychological abuse. Gender-based and domestic violence tend to worsen in times of crisis. 
Home isolation and economic concerns can increase conflict levels at home. The Norwegian government has implemented several measures to halt these negative consequences. We have initiated information campaigns on support services, weekly statistics on reported cases and provided the police with guidelines. We have also defined employees at crisis centers as essential services personnel, which means that they could send their children to school and kindergarten when they have been closed, closed for others. Women and men work in different segments of the labor market and COVID-19 impact on the segments differently. More women than men work in sectors that have high infection exposure. For instance, 8 out of 10 working in healthcare in Norway are women. It is especially important for these women to have strict and gender sensitive measures that hinder the spread of the virus. Although Norway ranks number two of 153 countries in the Global Gender Gap Report 2020 behind, behind our Icelandic neighbours, unpaid car, care work at home is not evenly distributed among Norwegian men and women. Women spend more time on household chores and taking care of children than their partners, no matter how much they work outside the home. Crises tend to reinforce traditional gender roles. A survey in Norway showed that when schools and kindergartens closed, a greater share of the increased care burden fell on women. We are closely monitoring how the pandemic and the measures to combat it are affecting gender equality in our country. Norway is actively advocating gender equality internationally. We will make sure to direct the attention to how the pandemic affects women and girls particularly hard. It is important that the measures in the global combat against, <clears throat> against the pandemic are gender sensitive. The crisis may also be a chance to accelerate gender equality worldwide. Thank you and good luck with the conference. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to address the fifth high-level meeting of the UFM Women for Mediterranean Conference in its virtual edition in 2020. This year is very special in many ways. It's a year that marks the 25th anniversary of the Barcelona process which laid the foundations for the UFM and the landmark Beijing Declaration and its platform for action that enabled a global recognition of many of the gained rights of women across the globe today. At the same time, the world is witnessing new re realities amidst uh, the COVID-19 pandemic that will undoubtedly impact progress on gender equality and the empowerment of women. Ladies and gentlemen, as we come together to exchange experiences in accelerating gender equality and the empowerment of women, especially in the new con context of COVID-19, Egypt is proud to share the prerequisites for successful and impactful responses to strengthen women's participation and rights. The exceptional and serious political will to advance the rights of women in Egypt has made what was perceived as overambitious, indeed a concrete reality and a recognized basic right today. Currently, Egypt is witnessing notable positive progress on the women's empowerment and gender equality agenda. Progress that reflects this political will and sincere commitment as translated into strategies, policies, programs, to empower women and girls. Egypt was the first country in the world to launch a national strategy for the empowerment of Egyptian women in response to, to, to the UN SDGs. The strategy is composed of four intersectional pillars, which are poli political, economic, social empowerment and protection, with the legislative reform and the ideational change as cross-cutting. The president of Egypt adopted the strategy and instructed the government to regard it as the official plan for all the future work on the empowerment of women until the year 2030. Responsive governance is also key to advancing gender equality and women's empowerment. In an, in an immediate response to the outbreak of COVID-19, Egypt was the first country to the world 
to issue a policy directive note that act accurately depicted the situation and shaped the response to it, and launch a woman, a woman policy tracker to monitor the implementation of those policies. To date, more than 106 measures and preventive actions has been adopted in response to the pandemic. According to the UN Women UNDP COVID-19 Global Gender Responsive Tracker, Egypt was ranked the first in the Middle East region and West, Western Asia on measures taken by countries around the world to support women during the pandemic. Policies and dec decisions and actions will never be sustainable if women were not at the heart of the decision. Stemming from this belief, the cabinet has 25% of women Parliament was the percentage increased to 25%. The Senate, 14% and 20% appointed by the president. 25% constitutional quota for women representation in the, the future local councils. Ladies and gentlemen, Egypt has indeed broken the glass ceiling for women. The advisor to the president of Egypt on national security is for the first time ever a woman. A woman also assumed the position of regional governor and deputy governor for the first time since 2017, the year of Egyptian women. The vice president of the Central Bank of Egypt is a woman. The president of the Economic Court is a woman. Women judges are occupying senior positions in a judicial sphere. An assistant minister of justice for women and children's affairs was appointed, and a woman judge for the first time shared trials in the Egyptian criminal court. Ladies and gentlemen, this is only part of the larger vision Egypt has for its women and girls, who will hand in hand shape the, their future and fulfill women's constitutional rights, which were labeled by His Excellency the President of Egypt as a national duty. We look forward to sharing even more and to work with our partners and friends around the world to accelerate and achieve more gains for women. Thank you very much. Upload it to our virtual platform so it can be reviewed by participants during the entire week of the no conference. No nada. 16, excuse me, 16 to 20th of November. During the course of these five days of meetings, we will be reflecting on the overarching theme of accelerating gender equality in the context of COVID-19 pandemic, including important topics such as women empowerment, inclusive Mediterranean societies for women and girls, women challenges, and responses to the COVID-19 pandemic, and women leadership in the global health workforce. The conference seeks to further analyze the impact of the COVID-19 crisis on women and girls, and to highlight the key role played by women in addressing the pandemic. It also aims to identify what is needed to better value the role of women and foster women's participation in policy and decision making to address the pandemic. Thus, we will have plenary sessions with the key experts as well as side events and networking spaces for the virtual audience. Furthermore, to build real solutions for women in the Euro-Mediterranean region, we will have two challenge labs. First, on the economic impact of COVID-19 for women entrepreneurs in the MENA region and a second lab on violence against women during the COVID-19. The labs are intended to be an open space to share ideas and good practices to support women during this difficult period. Finally, I would like to welcome all of you to these five days of dialogue and ask you to please participate and share your ideas, comments, and suggestions to this interactive dialogue through our different platforms, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram. Download the conference app for an enhanced conference experience. Create personalized conference agenda. Use our matchmaking tool to network according to your interest. Ask questions to the speakers 
and respond to survey and polls, all while following the live sessions in full screen format. See you all tomorrow for our first plenary session on women on the front line of the COVID-19 at 10 a.m. with a panel full of brilliant and inspiring women. Thank you all for your participation. We look forward to a very successful and productive event. I will leave you now with a welcome video introducing into our platform hosting the full week of event of the WOCO. Be responsible, stay safe and healthy. Thank you. The UFM Women for Mediterranean Conference 2020 aims to promote gender equality and inclusion in the Euro-Mediterranean region and features high-level speakers from government, private sector and civil society. This year we focus on accelerating gender equality in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. We will look at the impact of the crisis on women and girls and highlight women's key role in pandemic response. Welcome to this first virtual edition of the conference. Log into the platform to join plenary sessions on women on the front line of COVID-19 and how to end gender-based violence. Follow side events on women's leadership in healthcare, on building safe, inclusive post-pandemic societies, on youth and gender stereotypes, and on mainstreaming gender in recovery response in rural areas. Learn how women entrepreneurs can navigate the COVID-19 crisis. Create your personal profile, add a photo and tell us about yourself. Read participants' proposals and vote for your favourites through the Challenge Labs on violence against women during the COVID-19 pandemic and the economic impact of COVID-19 for women entrepreneurs in the region. The most voted proposals will be presented during the conference. Browse the agenda. Check out the speakers and add sessions to your calendar. Follow live sessions with expert speakers. Connect with others to network one-to-one -one via chat or video. Join the matchmaking to build project or business partnerships. Visit the video gallery to hear messages from high-level representatives from the Euro-Mediterranean region. Participate in the session polls. Learn more about the topics and read the relevant studies in the resources corner. Follow us on social media and share your posts with the hashtag women mediterranean We look forward to welcoming you at the 2020 UFM Women for Mediterranean Conference. <laughs>